You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Cabral Concept. Good to have you back with me here today. Excited to get into our Training Thursday show. Today, I want to go over how to create the perfect workout program. And I know right now, right off the bat, you're saying you're going to give us the perfect workout program. How is there only one? Well, this one allows you to truly get the best of all worlds. So that's what I want to bring you today, is there are many different forms of exercise. And the problem is, oftentimes we are waiting four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, or an entire 12-week quarter to bring in other forms of training into our workout. The problem is, it leaves us weak in certain areas if we're always neglecting parts of our body. And that doesn't mean just muscle-wise, it means certain energy-based systems. So what I'm going to teach you over the course or of just the next 20 minutes or so is really going over some foundational-based principles that they teach in athletic training, they teach it to strength and conditioning coaches, they train it, teach it for like off-season programs for athletes, for personal trainers. So this is vital information that I want everyone to be able to really harness, to understand, and to be able to share with others. So... The reason that this podcast came up is that there's so many new workout programs out there, and a lot of them are actually quite beneficial. The problem is that they leave out, though, they leave out certain areas of your training. They're going to then make you more susceptible to either lowering your metabolism, which I'll teach you about in a moment, or that they negate the fact that most people want to transform their body and they want to look just a little bit better. And there's, again, there's nothing wrong with that. We're not talking about creating a cover model body for like a muscle and fitness or a flex magazine or one of those. I don't even know if flex magazine is still out. Those are the ones that I used to read in my early 20s. But I know for sure there's still men's health and women's health. And I think most people, and again, I'm, am I coming up with gross generalizations? Of course I am. That's I have to do that for the podcast, right? So I think a lot of people would like to look just you know, overall lean and more like the person on the cover of Men's Health or Women's Health than the cover of Flex Magazine or Muscle Fitness where it's more bodybuilder based. And again, does everyone have to have that body? Absolutely not. Is anyone, like are most people going to say, oh, I'm going to have those eight pack abs and be super lean and all that? No, because the other truth of the matter is this. I used to, I did like hundreds of videos with diet.com and a bunch of other different, you know, big names out there. And I can just tell you, and this is not putting anyone down, is Photoshopping that goes into images is absurd. So when you look at someone on the cover of a magazine, please do not hold your image up to theirs and say, oh, I'll never achieve that because those people are not achieving that either. That is, for the most part, photoshopped. Look at a video of that person versus a staged photo where there's not the special lighting, where there's not, believe it or not, they use body paint so they create more shadows or a a spray-based tan. And also, I help a lot of those people get that lean for about 24 to 48 hours. I've helped, I can't even tell you the number of fitness models, celebrities, cover models, etc. get that lean. And I talked about that on yesterday's show. So if you didn't tune into episode 1076, which was yesterday's show, do tune into that. All the show notes for today are at stephencabral.com forward slash 1077 for today. So the reason why I'm saying that is let's create our own best body. I don't want you to create someone else's best body. You were given your body. And you know what? It honestly is a blessing. It is a gift that you were given this. Are you going to be as lean as the next person? Maybe, maybe more so, maybe not. That's okay. Because maybe you have even greater health. Maybe you have all your other attributes, right? And when we look at that, we're talking about it from a vanity perspective. But I'll tell you this, from what I've seen and all my research, 
the better your waist to hip ratio. And if you don't know what waist to hip ratio is, simply go to stephencabral.com forward slash podcasts and type in waist to hip ratio or ask that question right over at cabralsupportgroup.com. So here's the thing though, that the leaner a person is to an extent, you can become too lean and more emaciated and you're actually more catabolic and susceptible to disease and breakdown and poor immune function. However, the leaner the waist hip to ratio for the most part, same with BMI between 19 and 24.9, same with the size of the neck, all of these things, the less chance for cancer, the less chance for all sorts of different stroke and cardiovascular-based issues, and less chance for type 2 diabetes. And when we look at that, well, those are the top four causes of death. So my job is to help you get leaner to a healthy standpoint, right? Not vanity-wise, but to a healthy standpoint, and then you can choose to do it for vanity if you want. But my job as a naturopath, integrative health practitioner, you know, bioregulatory practitioner, is to make sure that I help you get as healthy as possible. And yes, getting leaner, whether you believe in that body type or not, doesn't matter. We're just talking about the science, is that typically you're going to be healthier. So I want to help you with that, okay? But I always want you to understand the metrics and where I'm coming from. I'm coming from it from a point of health, not saying that you need to get leaner because, oh, you'll, from a vanity standpoint, you'll feel like you look better. That's not true at all. And I actually don't believe that at all. So what I want to do right now, though, is get into that perfect program that is part of the body transformation, but also you're going to find out from a strength, from a longevity perspective as well. So what does it mean to create the perfect program? Well, the perfect workout program is this. It's one that balances all aspects of energy, metabolism, strength, neurological, flexibility, and cardiovascular. So I'm going to take you through that. Then I'm going to give you a very simple exercise week from anywhere from three days a week to five days a week. And I spoke about this in The Rain Barrel Effect. So if you haven't read that book yet, The Rain Barrel Effect is literally exactly how I practice. It's how I help people all over the world to rebalance their body, to lose weight, get well, and as we say, feel alive again. Because there's so many people right now who lack the vitality of wanting to really live. Of you know, I mean that not from a negative perspective, but they just don't have a lot of zest for life. And when you don't have a lot of zest for life, you just walk around blah. And you just walk around living someone else's life, just kind of going through the motions. And for me, I mean, I want the best for you. And so by participating in exercise, we boost the endorphins. By eating healthier, we, for the most part, are going to have less inflammation. We're going to feel a whole lot better. By doing a detox, we're less weighed down with all the toxins. So these are all things we preach in our community, and I do hope that you're starting to move into those. So let's get into that perfect workout program. Now, there are five main types, and again, we can break them down further in the future, but there are five main types of exercise. That means more with resistance-based training, and I want to give you those right now. The first one is this, and it's called neurological training. Now, neurological training is what allows you to train the nervous system to tell the muscles how hard to push or how to work within space. So neurological training would be anything plyometric-based. It would be more uh, like a box jump. It would be anything essentially leaving the ground. That's an easier way to say it. It would be plyometric-based push-ups, but it's also lower rep range-based work. So if you're working essentially below five reps, one in three reps is more neurological-based training. That means there'll be less of an adaptive effect in terms of your muscle growth, although that will happen over time because of what's called uh, myofibril-based damage or buildup, and that's more of the actual dry muscle tissue. We don't need to get too in-depth with that today, uh, but that happens over time. So neurological-based training tells your body either how to move in space, so really important, proprioception, I'll be getting that towards the end as well, and it has to do with lower rep range. Now again, you can come up with uh, different contradictions to each one of these, but I'm giving the overall generalization. So that's the first part. The second part is this, strength-based. Okay, This is really important because strength-based training is going to allow you to get stronger. Now, that might seem obvious, but here's the important thing. Not everybody trains to get stronger. And I actually think it's to the detriment of them because training to get stronger does not mean you're going to put on a lot more muscle. 
Again, it's more training from what's called a myofibril-based hypertrophy standpoint. So that means over time, you could add a little bit more muscle. But you're not going to like blow up. That's simply not the thing. But strength-based training is going to have the most effect, in my opinion, and from the research that I've read, especially with Dr. Wayne Westcott and many others, that that strength-based training is going to allow you to also build up bone mass. And that's vitally important for both men and women, but especially women. And remember, if you're not doing your strength training before the age of 27, you're missing out on a lot of your potential for being able to build up bone. Now you might say, well, I'm 46 listening to this. Does that mean I can't build any more bone? Well, you can build a little bit. But what's more important right now is that you are able to stop any more bone loss. That's why, whether you did your strength training below the age of 27 or not, for women mainly, is neither here nor there. It means you need to start doing it right now to keep what you do have. And if you did train before the age of 27, good for you, but you still need to keep training in order to keep that bone mass. And that needs to be twice a week, right? Twice a week minimum, ideally three. But we'll talk about that towards the end. So that strength-based, strength-based will make you stronger, which will eventually help with this next one if you choose to work on this next one as well. This strength training is so overlooked. Here's why. When you lift to get stronger, you are also able to work on many things. That's fall prevention, but you're able to prevent, hopefully, hernias. And it makes daily living so much easier. You're able to do a lot of you know ridiculous things like I try to do, which is when my family goes on vacation, we've got two little girls. And I say to my wife, I'm like, listen, I'm like, can you grab the girls? What I'm going to do is try to grab every suitcase that we have imaginable stack it on my entire body and then try to walk through the airport like an insane person. And that's, I, that's I'm a one trip kind of guy. That's what I like to do. Same with the groceries. We might have eight bags of groceries. I'm just going to wrap them on every limb that I have and just try to like get them from the car to the house so that I don't have to go back and forth. Now, would it be smarter to do multiple trips? Of course. That's just the way that it is. But strength training allows you to do all these things. Strength training allows me to pick up my two daughters. You know, Let's say combined, they weigh over 70 pounds. And you know, run around the house with them and have some fun. That's what strength training allows you to do. Well, this is important because I want to do that one day if I have grandkids, right? Like I want to be able to pick them up. I don't know how old they'll be when I'm a you know a grandparent. It's funny even saying that right now. But these are things that I just look at. I look at because I know, and it's partly because I know a lot of people don't think about it like this, and it's obviously many years away from me. I only have a four and six year old, but. I see people in my practice, right? So I see people in my practice every day and I see people from around the world because we're pretty much 90% or more than that virtual now. So I see people in their 60s and 70s and 80s and I see some people that are in amazing shape. They still ski, they play basketball and I'm like, that's incredible, right? But they did that, they're able to do that because they've always kept up with it. They've kept their bodies strong. And I see some people And they're in their late 60s, and there's no way they're putting on a pair of skis. There's no way they're playing a game of basketball. There's no way they're going for a jog, a bike ride. There's no way they're picking their grandkids up. And I think that's a shame. And it's partly not their fault. It really isn't. Because who told them, like at what point in their life did anyone tell them, you know what, it's important for you to continue with the gym and your workouts two, three days a week minimum? Nobody. Absolutely no one. Not their parents, not their teachers, not society, no one. No one taught them that. And so that's why I believe, and I'm going to continue to dedicate you know, these training Thursdays. Sometimes they're toxic Thursdays, but we're, these training Thursdays. And go back and listen to previous training Thursdays. It will teach you what you need to do for proper exercise. Remember, I got my start in this industry 18 years old, even before that, 17 years old, couldn't be truly certified at 17, but I worked in gyms. So 18 years old as a personal trainer. So, and that's, you can do so much good. That's why I believe personal training is one of the greatest jobs in the world. If you combine personal training with our integrative health practitioner certification, I I just think it's the best of both worlds. I honestly do. I just believe the level of people that you're going to help is just incredible because you get to help them and you see them like twice a week. Nobody sees people twice a week. Like I don't even see my friends twice a week. I see my wife, my kids. That's about it. Like literally. And so when you look at that, you're able to see people around twice a week as a personal trainer and the amount of good that you can do teaching about nutrition, sleep, healthy lifestyle, right? All this is just, it's unbelievable. I just think you can affect so much change. That's strength. The next form is hypertrophy. Hypertrophy means being able to put on muscle mass. 
Now, maybe you are a person in their 20s or early 30s and you're like, I don't really don't want to put in any more muscle. Fine. Totally understand. But that's a fraction of the population. Many people in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s want to put on a little bit more muscle. And the reason is they're feeling their metabolism go downhill. Well, it's not an easy thing to do. That means you need to focus and have a real program focused on adding a little bit of muscle. Just keep in mind, to this day, there is this mythology, especially for women, and again, I'm making generalizations, but this is what I do. It's based on almost 300,000 client appointments. Women, a lot of women are worried about putting on a lot of muscle, and I understand that. But what I can tell you is this. It is unfounded for 99.99% of the population. And the reason is this, is that you do not have the genetic makeup, especially within the upper body. So it's about 25% less muscle minimum for females versus males. And less testosterone, about, I can just tell you from my lab tests, about 4x to 5x less to be able to put on that much muscle mass. It just isn't there. It's less IGF-1 as well, less growth hormone. So what I always say to people is this, male, female, honestly, it, it doesn't matter. If you're worried about putting on too much muscle, it's not going to happen overnight. You'd be lucky to put on a couple pounds a month, and that would be an untrained person. I mean, someone who's been training for years to put on a couple pounds a month, they would think it's like they've literally found um, the holy grail or something like that. And the reason is, that's not a possibility after you've been training for five years or so to put on two pounds a month, 24 pounds of muscle for the year. Not unless you're on some serious anabolic steroids or growth hormone. So here's the thing. If at any point you ever feel working with your personal trainer on a program, you're putting on too much muscle, no problem. You can simply cut back on your hypertrophy-based training and the muscle most likely just go away or um, you won't put on any more. And it's very slow. So just keep that in mind. So the last part, uh, so hypertrophy is a different zone. Strength is more like the, let's say five to eight reps. Hypertrophy is going to be more in the eight to 12 repetitions. And the last part we want to get into is more of the muscular endurance. This is greatly overlooked. This is the 15 rep range to sometimes 20 rep range. There are many muscles that actually respond better to higher rep ranges. These are the ones that typically are going to fatigue with a little bit more time in daily life. It might be the calves. It might be the biceps. It might be the abdominal area. It might be the triceps. It might even be like the lateral deltoids, your shoulders. So these muscles, which work more from what's called a single joint, so there's one joint mover, such as your elbow with your biceps and triceps, or your glenerohumeral joint with your shoulder for your deltoids, which are the side of your shoulder, front, back, and side, or your calves, which might be as simple as flexing and extending the ankles, right? So these muscles uh, may actually do better with more higher rep range. But we actually use this for beginners in our foundational base, our starter base program. And I give you that in the Man's Guide to Muscle and Strength. That's a book that I wrote many years ago. It's for both men and women. But my publisher decided just to call it a Man's Guide to Muscle and Strength because they thought it was better for marketing, but it's for men and women. We use that in our practice. We have a good split between men and women in our body transformation studio in Boston. If you're in the Boston area, we'd love to have you. Just go over to stephencabralstudio.com and you can apply right over there. So That's that. And we actually use that in the beginning of our programs because we get amazing fat loss and we get amazing hypertrophy for untrained people or people that haven't been doing it for a while. Or if you've never done a 15 rep program, it works fantastically well. Okay. So those are the four main types of resistance-based training, but there's one more. And this is even more crucial. I'm glad so many younger people are doing it, but even more crucial when you get into your 60s and beyond. And it's for fall-based prevention. It has to do more with what's called proprioception. And it goes back to the neurological component that we spoke about first. However, instead of doing one to three reps for a lot of weight, we're doing higher reps, but working more on balance. So we're doing things such as one-legged based exercises. Now, that's great for everyone, right? We might even put someone on standing on an Airx-based pad, just like a balance-based pad, or a BOSU ball with the blue side up. Or we might have someone kneeling with both knees on a stability ball, which is an amazing exercise if you've never tried it before for engaging the adductors and abductors of the legs. I mean, it's, it's incredible. You have to force to engage your core. Do I believe in standing on a stability ball? No, 
but I believe in kneeling on it. Fantastic exercise as well. So there's so many exercises like that. All it means is that you're working on fall prevention and you're working on working on balancing your body in space. Great exercise. You can do it in many different ways. Another position is called the bird dog. Very simple one. Most people should be doing that exercise. You simply get down in a quadruped based position with your knees below your hips and your hands below your shoulders, basically on fours, and you're lifting your right arm and left leg at the same time, trying to hold, engage the posterior chain of your glutes, upper back, hold, and then switch sides, opposites, okay, at the same time. Now, you can make it even a little bit more challenging by doing uh, unilateral, by doing both sides at the same time as well. But again, you can look these up on video, and you can also work with a good personal trainer as well. That's number five. The next part you're going to get, want to get into your program every program is some type of cardio. And we have two types. We have our endurance-based or aerobic-based. And I believe this is making a comeback. I spoke about this uh, many podcasts ago for good reason. Aerobic-based cardio oxygenates your body to a greater level. That is an amazing thing for your cells. It really is. It helps balance pH naturally. It helps to remove a lot of excess toxins. It helps huff off extra carbon in the lungs. It's, It's a great form of exercise as well. And it will help with burning body fat, of course, at a higher percentage of body fat, but lower total burn overall compared to interval-based training. So do we love interval-based training for body transformation? Absolutely, we do. Certainly do. So we do interval-based training, which could be anywhere from three to 10 or so intervals, sometimes more, but three to 10 for most people. And those would be anywhere from 20 seconds to typically 60 seconds maximum of all out work, followed by anywhere from usually two to five X in terms of rest. Now, there's also things like the Tabata interval, which is 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off, and there are different variations of that. Those are great, but that's more anaerobic. So it's actually going to be helping to build hypertrophy, at least in the beginning, but it's also going to boost metabolic rate. So that's great as well. So we love interval-based training. And the last part that everyone needs in order to have a well-balanced program, the perfect program, is recovery. And recovery is the overlooked form of exercise. And that includes stretching after a workout, flexibility after a workout. Why not before? Well, there's a little bit of change in your neurological output, which means um, you can become slightly, slightly less neurologically adapted or weaker. And I'm using that in quotes. But also, your body's not fully warmed up. So unless you're doing a general warm-up and then a specific warm-up, body's not as adapted to stretching. So we do stretching, but it's more from a dynamic warm-up perspective. And then um, what we do after the workout is we'll foam roll. So we use a foam roller, which is called self-myofascial release. You're welcome to look up any of these topics. I have videos on them as well. And you can do something called stretching, active stretching or static stretching. And this allows you, and again, these are all topics I've covered before on the Cabral concept. So simply go to stephencabral.com forward slash podcast and type in your keyword right there. So stretching will allow you to lengthen those muscles and it will allow you, in my opinion, or help recover faster. Put your body into that parasympathetic nervous system where more recuperation can happen at a faster rate. You can also do things such as sauna after the workout. That will help with recuperation. You could do a... I'm a huge proponent of Hatha yoga. So especially on off days to do some yoga to work on stretching, flexibility. There are others that I could give you today, but there are too many contraindications around cold baths and things like that. So I'm not going to give that today. All right. So how do you now pull it all together to create the perfect workout program, which is a tall order for me to give you, but here's how we can do it. You can create one day that is more of the lower rep range. You can do a day that's more neurologically challenging. And it could be anywhere from the eight reps down to five reps. You could even do a five set times five reps, which isn't going to get you huffing and puffing maybe as much, but it is going to work on more of that neurological based strength. Or maybe you're looking to do a little bit more balance-based exercises, okay? So you can certainly get that in. And then after that day, we'll do some cardio. Now, why wouldn't we do intervals after a neurologically challenging day? The reason is this, that your body is already challenging itself to the max in terms of its neurological system, telling the brain, tell the muscles how to work in space or how to push the heaviest weight possible or pull the heaviest weight possible. So after that, we'll do some just lighter cardio. That's a balance to the neurology. Then we'll do a day that's more in the hypertrophy-based range. So our first day is more strength and neurology. We can do a couple sets at eight reps, and then we can drop down to three reps or five reps 
for the neurological base component. Our second day can be more of the hypertrophy range. Somewhere between 8 and 12 reps will typically stay between 10 reps and 12 reps. And that will allow us to boost the metabolism of the muscles to try to build a little bit more hypertrophy from, uh, yes, both a myofibril, but also what's called a sarcoplasm form of getting that those full muscles that we want, the good tone that everyone wants, or most people want, again, generalizations. And then after that day, we'll do intervals, right? Because that's not going to be too neurologically challenging. So we can do our intervals after that workout. And then we can do a third day of more muscular-based endurance. We can do it more at the 15 rep range or even maybe a little bit higher. This would be more of your boot camp style, right? This would be kind of moving from one exercise to another, keeping the heart rate going a little higher rep range. And then after that, sometimes we don't even need any type of cardio or intervals. The reason is that whole workout is basically interval-based metabolic resistance, sometimes called HIT-based training, high-intensity interval training. So there you have it. I mean, there are variations of that. You could do one neurologically challenging day, one strength day, and one hypertrophy day, which is more like the 12 to 15 rep range. You can do the one I talked about, which is more strength and neurology the first day, more hypertrophy, and then more muscular endurance. And then after those workouts, you can do a little bit of cardio and interval-based training. And then after each workout, you can do five, 10 minutes of stretching or and or some myofascial release with a foam roller, getting a massage, doing a sauna, any type of stretching, hatha yoga would be fantastic. Now remember, this is only three days per week, but I just believe that if people can give me and yourself three days per week, we can make some real magic happen in terms of body transformation and anti-aging, right? We can honestly do that. We can tell the body that it's growing younger. We can tell the body how to transform itself. And this is one of the best ways to do that. This is a really nice balance. So if you give me a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, remember, keep those days in between so that we never take more than two days off. Remember, Monday, Wednesday, Friday only allows you the weekend off, two days in a row. You could also do it Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Now, just do your best to try to do that, that three days per week. Now, if you can add an extra day, fantastic. What should your extra day be? Honestly, whatever you'd like, whatever you'd like. Do some indoor rock climbing. Go for a run outside if you love it. Go play squash. Go to a spin class. Do whatever you enjoy, honestly. Exercise is also supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be enjoyable. That's why I talk about it all the time. During the summertime, I'm outside. I'm using battling ropes. I'm using a steel mace. I'm using kettlebells. I'm going for a swim. I'm going for a bike. I'm having fun. I'm outside, right? But I'm always making sure that I get some type of resistance-based training in there. Again, if you're working with a personal trainer and they're doing three days a week of hypertrophy, that's not that it's a problem. It's honestly not because what they're trying to do is get you to a specific goal. But what I gave you today is not specific goal-based, but it's based on like overall health, overall body transformation, and overall anti-aging. So if your goal is just to get in better shape, you know, live longer, um, help strengthen every area of your body, this is how to do it. So hopefully this was helpful. Please do feel free to let me know if you have any questions. I'd be happy to help. And if this show is helpful, please do feel free to pass along to anyone it may serve. Thank you for just tuning in. I really appreciate your support. It honestly means the world to me. And before you go, I want to share with you this, and that's most people are deficient in these specific vitamins. They're the B vitamins, namely B6, B12, also known as methylcobalamin, and methylfolate. It's also vitamin C and vitamin D3, as well as the EPA form of the omega-3s. Did you know that the body really only becomes sick or unbalanced in only two ways? Over time, you become deficient in vital nutrients, and you also accumulate toxins internally and from the environment. As those nutrients diminish and you increase your total toxic load, your body then begins to show the first signs of dis-ease. It's actually quite predictable, and the good news is that if we know how you began to fill up that proverbial rain barrel, we also know how to empty it to begin the healing process. I was fortunate enough to learn this ancient healing process from my mentor after suffering from debilitating diseases for close to a decade. It was only when I began to implement these techniques did I finally overcome my illnesses and go on to live a life of energy and vitality that I now enjoy. I'd like to share with you now what I discovered after traveling all over the world and how to combine the best of ancient healing wisdom with state-of-the-art science. Allow me to teach you exactly how I've been able to help over a quarter of a million people to empty their rain barrel and begin to transform their body and lives into what they've always hoped they could be. 
To get your copy of the international bestseller, The Rain Barrel Effect, simply go to stephencabral.com forward slash rain barrel.